Greetings duplicants and welcome to the breach. In the last episode we set up a metal refiner and used that metal to build a self-powered oxygen maker. Due to the way things work out this episode is going to be a lot more smaller tasks. As we work through the base I'll be pointing out some of the problems we're experiencing at the moment and other problems we'll have to overcome. You can see on screen the map of cycle 237 so let's get into the episode and see what I've done so far. At the end of the last episode I'd built the self-powered oxygen maker but I hadn't really dealt with the excess hydrogen that it produces. So here I have a power setup. I'm taking the excess hydrogen and storing it in a gas reservoir. That gas reservoir is feeding two hydrogen generators that will supply power on demand. I'm then taking any excess hydrogen that I produce that is over and above the gas reservoir volume and just burning it off. The power these hydrogen generators are producing is being used to feed the exosuit forge and the atmospheric docks. These hydrogen generators are just a temporary solution until I get round to building a proper power plant. I've now sealed the base and the only way to get out of it is via the atmospheric docks. The area is fully pressurised with oxygen and as you can see I've done some reclamation on the top right hand corner where I've blocked off part of the caustic biome to get rid of the chlorine gas that was in there. Talking of unwanted gases, this is my CO2 pit. It uses two gas sensors and an AND gate to check for carbon dioxide and pump out a small amount of it each time both sensors are activated. Well it should do but looks like the gas vent is over pressured so it's time to upgrade this with a little bit of plastic that I have. Great, now that's sorted out. When there's only two gases in the base, as in oxygen and carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide will always sink to the lowest part available, so my little pit. Once the pit is full and both sensors are covered in carbon dioxide, then it will pump out that CO2. Here we are at the gym, we're getting the duplicates to run on the hamster wheels because we want to improve their athletics and it also improves their operation as well. Wearing an atmospheric suit slows the duplicate down so we want to offset that by getting the athletics to about 14 at least. We've added a lot of decor to make the duplicate process as nice as possible for them. All duplicates will be sent to the gym until they have their athletics to 14. Once that happens they will not be allowed to use the gym and will be used for outside base purposes. Here we have our fully upgraded Grand Hall with crown moulding and paintings, all in pursuit of making the duplicates' lives as nice as possible. And the reason I have a small amount of plastic is I've set up this Dreco ranch. I'm feeding the Dreco's mealwood and they are dropping both glossy Drecklet eggs and standard Drecklet eggs. I have shearing stations set up to uh, get the pelts from the Dreco's, both the shiny and the standard ones, which gives me access to extra reed fibre and plastic. A Dreco farm like this can take over 100 cycles to come online fully and start supplying a good quantity of plastic. It will be a while before I have enough plastic saved up to build some upgrades for my main base, but I will be needing some plastic soon to be able to build some steam generators to help me with my cooling problems. I have a small area set aside for ranching poke shells, because I'll need a lot of lime for when I'm ready to go to space. These ranches are built together in a contained area so I can pressurise and reduce the off-gassing of the polluted dirt I feed the poke shells. And the other reason it makes it easy to uh, regulate the temperature because I don't want it getting too hot. As you can see the temperature has gone above 30 degrees and it's therefore stifling the mealwood. I will need to add some cooling to this area. I was doing some exploring hoping to find some cool water supply but it didn't happen. I've got a gold volcano here instead and that's just been tamed and ready to activate as soon as I have access to a steam turbine. 
To get to this gold volcano, I've had to dig through and deal with some standing water. The more I dig down, the more water I'll come across and the bigger problem it's going to be. So it looks like I'm going to have to come up with a solution for this sooner than, rather than later. As it can take 100 cycles to get a Dreco Ranch online and working, I decided that I would instantly go and grab myself some Wheeze Warts. There's a nice cycle between Wheeze Warts, Dreco's and Mealwood. So having these Wheeze Warts planted doesn't actually cost us anything. Right, we need to do some materials research, so we need to acquire some radiation. And for that we're going to build a radiation lamp. We're working on tier 3 science. So while that's happening in the background, we're going to dig out the final bit of our base. Because once we get access to cooling, we will want to build ourselves a kitchen for long-term storage of food. But that'll probably be for the next episode, because I need to get the research done first. You can see I have a lot of hatchlings running around at the moment. They haven't been turned into barbecue yet, because I don't have the long-term food storage. With the rising temperatures outside the base, very soon the mushrooms will become stifled, so I'll need to change over my major food source and rely on barbecue for a while. Plenty of room for some expansion now. And that's the final bit of research completed. We now have access to steam generators, which means we have access to cooling. We'll change our research to gas ovens, and that will be ready for the next episode. But for now, thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.